meant trust alone. This is an absolutely mysterious monster steroid, 7-alpha-methyl-19-nor-testosterone, or in its pro-drug form, trustalone acetate. This, in my opinion, currently is such a fascinating and mysterious, powerful anabolic steroid because no one's really using this up until now. The historical men that are using steroids historically for decades, they really haven't used this drug extensively. So it was very hard for me to find so much on it, but I did my research and I talked to a lot of men that have used this. And I really got into great anecdotal stories on this. And I'm here to bring this to you today. The history of this drug goes back, like the other steroids, to the golden era of synthetic steroid production in the 1960s. It was never marketed from 1960s. Then, 30 years later, in the mid to late 1990s, shearing blows the dust off of this agent, and they make it an experimental anabolic steroid where they were looking to market this drug for male contraception and as an alternative to testosterone for testosterone replacement in men that are hypogonadal. That's incredible. And part of the mysterious aspect of this is the legal status. Some people say it's a pro-hormone, and you think of pro-hormones, you think of oral agents. This is not an oral agent, and we'll see why when we talk about the chemistry. So the legal status of this is a gray marketed steroid pro-hormone and it's been marketed even quite openly by some companies on that gray market peptide sites because legally it's never been put on an anabolic steroid list. It's never been marketed as an actual medicine. The chemical structure of ment trestolone 7 alpha methyl 19 nor testosterone yes it's a 19 nor anabolic steroid, it's nandrolone derived. And we'll see the similarities to decadrobalin and trend. With a methyl group at the C7 alpha position, this creates the properties of this drug. Massively, massively anabolic and incredibly androgenic. Now, if we look at the classic staging and standardization of anabolic androgenic steroids back in the day everyone knows you have a two scale system compared to testosterone that is 100 on both anabolic and androgenicity so everything's compared to testosterone so if you look at trend for an example it has a 500 rating on both anabolic and androgenic ment has a 650 androgenic rating and the anabolic rating is 2300 now this is unbelievable now that rating scale everyone knows is really in the lab it's not clinically in real humans although it's obvious that these drugs are more anabolic or more androgenic in their properties but this is really in the lab animals but i just found that this to me those numbers are off the chart, and there's no higher numbers in any of the standard tables. This is the highest, especially for the anabolic rating. Side effects of this drug are the key aspect of this presentation. Estrogenicity and progestational side effects. Remember, it's nandrolone derived, so you're going to see some similarities here. Technically, it has weak estrogenicity via the production of a synthetic estrogen, 7-alpha-methyl-extradiol. And the amazing piece of this is that in the studies where they were looking at this drug meant for TRT as an alternative, they found out that men had lower bone density in these studies on trial using this drug. We know that part of that is going to be from estrogen stimulation 
directly on the bone. Now, I think this is one of the main reasons why this drug was not brought to market. So, technically, it has this aspect of lower estrogen stimulation. Now, clinically, everyone knows that you're going to get what appears to be massive side effects of water weight gain and estrogenicity. Look at this paradox. So weakly, technically estrogenic, but in the streets, clinically, it's massively estrogenic. And one of the men that I talked to about this said, Doc, make sure you differentiate that, that it looks like scientifically it has a pro effect of low estrogenicity with this synthetic estrogen that's produced. But clinically, guys just blow up and can gain 20, 30 pounds of water in a couple weeks on this drug. This is like Dynaball on steroids. Really, it's incredible. So what is that effect? What is that massive estrogenicity? Well, it's got progestational effects. Let's take a step back. Let's look at other NOR19 steroids, Nandalone steroids. Decadrobalin versus Trent. So Decadrobalin has massive puffiness and water weight gain. Everyone knows that. It's not a cutting drug at all. But it's such a similar drug to this. So the progestational effects of that nandalone drug and this nandalone drug must be quite similar. Even though chemically they have such slight changes in the functional group. Now, Tren, that's a lean, hard cutting drug. It does have progestational effects, but obviously it's very different clinically how these things all work, but they're all nandalone derived drugs. I found this to be absolutely incredible. Now move on to the androgenic effects of this drug. Very androgenic compound inherently due to the C7 alpha methylation, trestolone is resistant to 5 alpha reduction. So DHT blockers, finasteride, dutasteride will have no effect. There is no dihydrometabolite produced. Now again, let's compare to decadrobalin. Decadrobalin does have a dihydrometabolite compound produced, dihydronandolone. Now, this dihydrometabolite as a nandolone decadrobalin is weaker in its androgenicity. Now, thinking about this drug meant, I think about the target tissues and I think about the prostate, I think about the hair, because that's what everyone thinks about, acne and so on and so forth, when you think androgenicity. In the studies for this drug, one of the reasons why they wanted to use it as an alternative to testosterone is that it appeared to have less androgenicity and stimulation on the prostate. Prostates in these men shrunk versus on testosterone. We do know that it can enlarge. TRT can definitely lead to BPH. I see it every day in my medical practice. Thank God it doesn't look like it causes prostate cancer, but if you have prostate cancer, even a little bit of prostate cancer, even a few cells and you start TRT, it can definitely further grow that. Please listen to me, men, and understand that. We have to be humble. We have to monitor men. So this turned out to be something positive for men. The doctors thought, here, we're going to have a drug we can use for TRT. Maybe it presents a nice well-being for men, and we could use it, and it won't grow the prostates. This was back almost 40 years ago. What happened to this? Another mystery. It didn't work out. Now, androgenicity on the central nervous system. It must be positive. This is why men feel well on androgens, not to mention if there are mood destabilizing aspects to a man, this can cause definitely mood worsening. This can, a man that has any mania could be manic. We all know about roid rage. It's a guy that has a propensity and we know that it's a doc, it's an asshole. Now it's an asshole on steroids and that's roid rage. We don't know. We have no studies on this at all. That's why I have this channel and I present these aspects to you openly. Hair. We know that hair in a man that's susceptible 
has DHT, it converts testosterone to DHT and the hair follicles get affected and they're shedding. Now, ment, we know it must be the parent compound directly affecting the hair here because there's no dihydro metabolite. If you look at the anecdotes, the guys that I've talked to in the videos on the internet, on YouTube, you'll see that it probably does accelerate hair loss. So I want to bring that to your attention. So in summary, this incredible mysterious steroid, what's going on here? We don't know. Very limited amount of studies, never marketed as an actual medication for TRT or contraception for men. And only now it seems to be coming into play in the underground. Be very careful. What else is part of this mystery? The doses. How do these doses come to play from clinical trials? 0 0.8 milligrams per day. So less than one milligram per day for men, TRT, using it for TRT or contraception. What's going on now? What are the doses now? The doses now are used in the underground 20 milligrams a day, I found, up to 70 milligrams a day. No wonder, this is over 50 times the dose used in the studies. No wonder there's massive side effects to this. But we've seen this before. I've seen this before. 15 years ago when I saw SARMs coming into play, Osterin, the dose was used in the streets was 25 times higher than the doses used in the studies. I am absolutely amazed that the powers to be and how, who picks that we're gonna use this dose in the underground and then it runs and it takes off from there. Isn't that incredible? So it's, why wouldn't it be maybe double the dose of what we used in the studies? No, it's up to 50 times the dose. Absolutely incredible. Please help me out with this. Please give comments on this drug. I think this drug, unfortunately, is a very dangerous drug, very powerful, much more powerful than Tren. And I see the damage that Tren causes on a man's central nervous system, not to mention the cardiovascular system, the kidney system, and the prostate system. So please be careful. Please believe me. If you're young and you haven't used steroids, or you're older or middle-aged and you're using steroids, you have to be careful. You have to take your health to be so serious. The consequences of using these drugs or any drugs at all can be severe. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let's get some great comments going. If you've been on this drug, please comment and give us your experiences. I really appreciate that. Men in the world will really appreciate this. I really hope this helps. Thank you so much.